What's going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. So in today's video, like always, we're going to be doing our playthrough video of Treasure Map Blackbeard. So I just got off doing my stream for three hours or so. We made it to three million points. Uh, it took us nine runs to get there. We're now doing our tenth run for this video today, where we're going to be doing the bonus map, which is pretty cool, of course. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, jump into it. So, so far from what I've seen so far, you know, with these nine runs of clearing it so far um the treasure map isn't that bad i feel like if you own stampede luffy or you own quick whitebeard this treasure map is easy as uh if you do not own those characters then of course you do have to rely on friend captains uh or other means through getting through these bosses and we'll discuss why i think that later on um just blackbeard is just a little bit of a challenge if you don't have those particular particular characters but it's not too much of an issue um so let's go ahead and continue on here now unfortunately last treasure map with the smoker um it wasn't a guaranteed bird on the treasure map it was very very weird but luckily this time around for us it is now guaranteed to land on the bird so you're guaranteed to always encounter a kainu as the intrusion boss always glad to see that uh, I'm going to go for the cooldown on the left-hand side. That's what I'm going to do because uh, one of my teams, you know, it, it, you don't need the cooldown, but definitely on high nav levels, having that cooldown for certain specials is going to be quite good. Um, and it really does depend on what kind of, you know, situation you're in with your teams. I think that earlier on, everyone really wants the cooldown buffs, but as you get to higher nav levels, like, you know, 50, 60, 70, higher than that, uh, you really want to try and get the attack up buffs. That's really going to help you out. So the first boss that we're going to be encountering is the intrusion battle, of course. So we are going to be using a Whitebeard team. So of course, if you watched my team breakdown video yesterday, you guys would see what teams I am using. Um, one of the teams has slightly changed in terms of the way that it functions because someone did point it out to me in my comment section of the team video that it was just a total oversight for myself personally. But anyways, this is the team that I was planning to use for against Sakazuki, my Whitebeard team uh, against the Blackbeard boss. We will discuss that when we get there. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. So there are two non-boosted units on our team and when i mean non-boosted i mean that whitebeard does not boost them with his captain ability and those two characters are douglas bullet and also the sabo so the main reason why we bring these characters is because bullet is a 1.5 point booster which is great and the other reason why we bring sabo is because he removes burn by five turns which is very useful here because against Akainu on stage 2, he does burn you for 5 turns. Now, yes, Whitebeard is able to go ahead and remove that. And if you are running double Whitebeard, you can use one Whitebeard special here. And that'll give you enough damage output to just KO this Akainu. But of course, I'm running the Vista as a friend captain just to give us a little bit more points. So because we have two Vistas on our team, we can actually use like one on stage 2 and one on stage 3. Vista special removes the, uh, the threshold there. We can use the Sabo special to remove the turns of burn that are applied here on stage 2. And then we can go ahead and use the Douglas Bullet special to not only health cut the enemy, but we have a support character attached to him that is the Psy Koala. And this Psy Koala will give our captain a 1.2 times attack boost whenever our character uses a special. So because we use the Bullet special, the support ability activates, and now our White Beard as our captain has a 1.2 type boost. So it's not, a, it's not like anything major, but it just gives us a little bit of extra damage that we wouldn't have otherwise that will enable us to take down a Kaino with no issues even if we are unable to take him down during this turn it's not too bad because he doesn't really do anything so uh, a Kaino is kind of straightforward eventually you're gonna have to switch it up but anyway the boss fight the boss fight against the Kaino he has an immunity buff I don't know if it's delay or full immunity it's one of the two uh, it is the delay immunity and we get a full board of block orbs so we're gonna go ahead and use the Sanji special which will change all of our block orbs into quick orbs which is great we change all orbs including block into quick as well as giving our crew a two times orb boost to strength and quick we can also go ahead and use the second vista here to give us some beneficial slots which is fine and then we can also go ahead and use the white beard which is of course going to give us the two times attack boost and the combo boost and white beard is just great he has such a powerful ability now you can see that our health is not as low as it could be um you can definitely try and bring some characters like health reducers to give you a higher multiplier but with this even with double white beard like this is going to last pretty much the whole treasure map it's not really that big of an issue even with all these boosts here how much damage are we dealing 
5.4 million damage. So eventually this team will have to change slightly. But as of right now, this is going to be working for a decent amount of time. And we do get a pretty good amount of points from this. I can't remember the exact multiplier. I think it's around 17 or 18 times, which is pretty good. And you can see we can drop those Valentine's Day chocolates. Now, if you drop, I think it's 50 you need to drop for the Chopper Man missions. You can get some gems, some free rare recruits. So definitely play this treasure map as much as you possibly can to fulfill those Chopper Man missions. So we killed him. And of course, we have a... 25 times point boost because of the bird, of course. So 3.3 million points. Let's go. All right, let's continue on. Um, so, of course, this is the secret map. So once you get to that certain point, you are able to choose whether you want to go to the left-hand side to get more points, the middle road to battle all of the mid-maps, or to go ahead to the right side to pick up the rainbow chests. Now, I think a majority of people are probably going to opt to choose those rainbow chests. Myself, personally, as a player that wants to try and get uh, to, to that point threshold as quick as possible, I always like to go for the left-hand side because I feel like every time I go through that side, it allows me to rank up quite a few spots there. We do get the stamina refill, which I'm greatly appreciative of. That's very, very good. All right, so... Now we're going to move over to the left-hand side and hopefully pick up as many points as possible. So let's see how we go. Starting off with a 1, which we love to see. All right, that's what I love to see. So 9,500 points. And of course, with the bird, that it gets multiplied by 1.5 every single time we reach that. And of course, the higher your nav level, the uh, the more points you get from these point spots, which is nice. Uh, so you can see we've already ranked up a couple spots here. As you can see, I'm in the top 30 right now. And uh, we are still ranking up spots by picking up these points, which is very, very useful, I feel. So... Uh, and it gets us closest to the to the Chopper Man mission rewards, uh, or to the, the point rewards here. You can see 3.4 million points already. It, it, I think it's extremely useful if you're a player like myself that likes to farm treasure map as much uh, as me, but uh, there are definitely more players out there that farm way more than me. You know, there are some crazy people out there that farm, you know, millions and hundreds of millions of points. So shout out to those guys. But anyway, we're at the battle rush right now, so we can go ahead and take on these bosses. So the first boss is the Pacifista, or the... PX5 Pacifista. So the team that I'm going to be using against that, like I said in my video, is going to be the Cerebral slash Free Spirit team with Sabo and Koala. So this team utilize the main component of this team is the Trafalgar Law Coliseum, which you guys will see why he is so good once we reach the final stage. So now we're on the boss stage right now where we have three pacifistas. Now this might seem intimidating, however they do not really have that much HP and the scaling is kind of low because of their HP value. So you shouldn't be too intimidated, but you can see that all of our subunits are actually special binded for three turns and we get a full board of badly matching slots. So the main important component here is by using Trafalgar Law to remove that special bind on our subs as well as providing an attack boost, which is kind of good. Uh, we could actually use the Sabo and Koalas first to get a higher attack boost, which is kind of nice but we didn't do that it's fine but uh we can get a color affinity from sabo and koala use their special to change badly matching slots into matching if you don't have sabo and koala you could definitely use treasure map nami even on this team she changes badly matching slots into matching as well so that's a really good uh kind of way around not having sabo and koala we've got the caesar here for an orb boost as well the orb boost is completely like overkill you definitely don't need that but you can see we're about to get a bunch of damage output here and this is going to work for the entire duration of the treasure map no problems whatsoever against the pacifistas. So following that, our next boss that we're taking on is Doc Q. So as I said, again, with my team composition in that video that I made, uh, this is the team we're going with, utilizing Akainu and Fujitora as our captains. And the team runs uh, in a very specific way. So you guys are going to see how this team is going to run once we reach the boss stage. So here we're on stage 7 right now with the Doc Q boss fight. So uh, with Doc Q, he will change all your orbs into either tandem or block orbs. Now, this team runs very specifically, which I did mention. And the reason for that is, is because because at this current point in time, we have four strength characters on our team. So we can actually activate the Luchi special to shuffle our orbs into either strength, quick, or int, as well as giving our team a two times color affinity boost, which is fantastic. Now what we can actually do is because we have already fulfilled that condition, we can go ahead and switch both of our captains to Fujitora. So we have more type advantage against Doc Q. We can then go ahead and activate Donald moderate special, which will change uh, your top row slots into matching, as well as giving your crew a 1.5 attack boost as well as removing the attack down. So this is honestly one of the best Fortnite units in the entire game, in my personal opinion. 
He's so good. Usopp is just a filler unit. He's a strength unit that's a 1.35 point booster. But now you can actually activate both of the Fuji Tora and Akainu specials. Full border matching slots. Pretty awesome. Uh, and now we can just go ahead and do as much damage as we possibly can. Lots of damage there. No problems. And then you can see he does revive. He revives with exactly 5,000 HP every single time. And he does have a very, very high defense. So what I would suggest is to bring a character that can deal fixed damage towards the enemy. Which we have this Stampede Zoro. 200,000 fixed damage towards the enemy and that's able to complete the boss fight so this team works very very well and is going to have no issues clearing it as i said for the duration of the treasure map so now the next boss is Jesus Burgess. I think out of all of the teams, this is probably the one I don't like using the most, but it is able to deal a lot of damage towards him. And it does utilize a bunch of 1.35 point boosters. You have Raid Sabo, you have the Fujitora uh, from the event, also Kizuno Boa Hancock, a bunch of 1.35 boosters. You've got the Double Big Moms and NL as 1.2 times point boosters. Overall, it's a pretty crazy team, but you'll see why it works once we get towards the end. So now moving on to the boss stage right now on stage 7, Jesus Burgess. He starts off as a strength character, and then he changes into a quick unit. You get paralyzed for 3 turns. Your captain's orbs, for some reason, are changed into empty. And uh, all of your orbs are locked as well for 2 turns. So something that you could actually do is use this NL. NL is fantastic here because not only does he fulfill giving himself a strength orb to then bypass that barrier to break it for you, but he also removes all of the paralysis. Make sure to use NL special before activating your chain locking abilities because NL with his special does remove chain lock so you got to be very very careful about that uh, we can actually go ahead and use Raid Sabo here to give some color affinity to, uh, with our Boa Hancock as she does have type advantage against the Jesus Burgess we can then activate the switch abilities of the Big Mom if we wanted to as well to get some beneficial slots as well as activating their special abilities to get the the uh, the stat boost giving everyone a thousand attack as well as giving the chain lock get the buffed captain abilities and this is uh, more than enough damage to take down Jesus Burgess for a very very long time of course so no problems there against Jesus Burgess and now the final team is going to be against Dofi. Uh, Dofi, again, pretty straightforward if you just run a, just a mono strength team, run Big Mom as a sub, you're going to have no issues with this fight. And that's basically what I've done here. Now, Douglas Board is a 1.5 times point booster, which is very, very beneficial. Uh, reason why we actually used him on the Akainu boss fight. But uh, again, he's being such a high point booster, he's perfect as a captain here. We also have the Stampede Smoker, who doesn't have type advantage against Doflamingo, but he is a 1.35 point booster, which makes sense why we're bringing him here. So so again, we're going to be very, very straightforward moving through this. See you guys at stage 7. So now we've made our way to stage 7. As I said, this fight is probably the easiest out of all the fights. Just because Doflamingo doesn't actually do anything. He doesn't have any... Uh, debuffs that you have to worry about he just has a reasonable amount of health and that's it so as i said after activating big mom's special ability especially if you have even just a friend captain douglas bullet you're not going to have any issues whatsoever taking these guys down with these two taps and with two taps with douglas bullet that's already 16 nearly 17 million damage <laughs> no problems whatsoever hilarious just seeing how much damage output douglas bullet is doing there so that's awesome but anyways uh now we've made it to the final boss which uh, of course is going to be the Blackbeard boss. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, the team, it does have a kind of a big brain play. So, shout out to someone on my stream. I, I, forgive me, I've forgotten their name, but they actually suggested it right as we were starting the treasure map. And in theory, I'm like, that actually kind of works. And it really does work. It's absolutely hilarious how good it is. Now, the oversight that I had in my previous video was the fact that, oh yeah, I can just use double white beard and it'll be fine. But you got to remember, you got to be below half health um, to ensure that when you reach stage seven, you're getting the massive despair reduction turns because remember with six plus white beard you have to be below 50 percent to remove despair by 20 turns and that's very very important now if i was just running a regular team without the supports here uh you wouldn't have below 50 percent when you reach stage seven unless if you on purpose like just take damage however the big key player here is this pudding this pudding is actually ridiculous this uh this support pudding which we have on our sanji so what happens is is when you reach the final boss fight your health is cut by 20 percent and gives you three turns of a higher chance of beneficial slots this is great so by the time we reach the boss stage on stage seven she automatically cuts her health by 20 percent now because we have the moby dick ship we're able to just make sure we're below 50 percent it literally works perfectly we could actually run the same strategy on this team if we wanted to it probably would make a little bit more sense but either way we're going to be using the vista 
to locate more Vista Friend Captains as we are able to use the Vista Friend still um, against the Blackbeard boss. So that's the oversight that I had in my previous video, not understanding that, you know, you're going to be below 50% but when you reach stage 7. Otherwise, the Whitebeard team isn't really going to work. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Now, you can see I do have Treasure Map Blackbeard on this team as well with the Lafitte support. And this is the reason why this team works as well as it does is because if you guys don't know, Lafitte, which supports Blackbeard, has an ability where whenever you get bind or despaired, I think maybe one other debuff, he actually removes it by two turns. So that means we can just stall one turn and then we can just KO Blackbeard after it. Um, the rest of the characters on this team, you can see we have the Stampede Nami. Now, Stampede Nami really doesn't, doesn't do anything on this team now. If I was running double black, uh, double Whitebeard, then, you know, Nami would still have use, as we can use one Whitebeard on Stage 6 and one Whitebeard on Stage 7. But because we're only running one Whitebeard, we have to use him on Stage 7. So we don't have one for Stage 6, which is why this team works the way that it does with the Lafitte support. Uh, as I said, if I was running double Whitebeard, then yeah, Stampede Nami would definitely have a use. But at least that uh, the Nami has... Has a, a 1.35 point boost, which is really, really nice to have. Uh, the Sanji, of course, you guys saw him a little earlier, being an orb booster for our um, strength and our quick characters, which is very nice to have, making Whitebeard deal exceptional amounts of damage. But here we go, we've reached stage 6 now. His preemptive will despair and bind uh, some units on our team for uh, three turns. Or well, it's actually for six turns, but with sockets, it's down to three. And of course, with the ability of Lafitte, it goes down to one turn. And you can see the white, uh, the, the, the white bit. The black bit actually changes typing depending on what your captain is. If you have a strength captain, he becomes dex. If you have a dex captain, he becomes quick. If you have a quick captain, he becomes strength. He turns into the unit that your captain is good against, which makes Whitebeard a little bit more viable for this fight. Um, and if you have a Sayo Int captain, he does not change his typing. Just putting it out there if you do decide to run. Like Stampede Luffy is very good here because he maintains his Int typing. But if you run an Int captain, he doesn't change into Sai. Just putting that out there. Uh, but now at this point, we are ready to just move on. So let's go ahead and use one of the Vista specials to give us some beneficial slots to our characters. And at this point, we can actually activate the Blackbeard special here. We don't need him for stage 7. It's just giving an orb and attack boost to our in characters which is only him on this team which is fine doesn't really matter it gives us a little bit of extra damage and uh, with this damage alone we are able to take down uh, the Blackbeard relatively easily he doesn't do anything for the first three turns so you can take your time with it it is not too bad but the final boss fight uh, again it, it's relatively simple he just despairs your friend captain for for 10 turns which you know if you have if, if you are really struggling you can definitely run someone like Legend Rayleigh who is not boosted but he does remove despair by seven turns which is useful but I wouldn't suggest that, but it is another strategy that I saw some people were talking about on my stream earlier today. But uh, at this point, we can just go ahead and activate the Sanji special to give us a full board of quick orbs once again. We can use Vista to change those orbs into beneficial for our um, quick and our Psy characters. And then using Whitebeard to not only give us the attack and the combo boost, but he also removes that despair. Because if you guys saw uh, with that preemptive attack, the pudding uh, effect activated, which put us below 50%, which gave us the ability to remove that despair. So after this now, we're able to just attack and uh, hopefully deal enough damage to kill Blackbeard, as you can see, and definitely a lot of damage here. Not even having to attack with our final Blackbeard, with our final Whitebeard, getting the names mixed up, of course, but it's fine. So that is the way that I've been dealing with treasure maps so far, and obviously when it gets to a point, we're going to have to be changing our team to be running double Whitebeard, but as it stands right now, definitely not having any issues at the moment. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video today. If you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you go ahead and leave a like, and if you guys want to stay up to date with all the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I will see you guys within the next video.